All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. My name is Hannah Combs reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer and we're here with Deborah Kruger who is candidate uh, for Commissioner District 4 and you're the Democratic candidate. I so am. thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're going to give you two minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you think you'd like to be commissioner in Queen okay. Anne's County. Okay, so just a little bit of background about, my, about myself. Um, my husband, my children, and I have lived in Queen Anne's County for the last 20 years. We raised our three children here. They're all graduates of Queen Anne's County, High, um, Queen Anne's County Schools. I am a speech pathologist. I've been in special education for 30 plus years. My husband is an RN at Walter Reed Bethesda Medical Center. My older son is a um, substance abuse counselor in the, ta in the Towson area, and my two younger children are in community college. So we raised our kids to give back to the community, to do something um, important as far as helping other people with their lives, and we try to lead by example, and I'm proud to say that I think we're doing that. My two younger kids are looking to go into teaching or social work. Um, I decided to run for commissioner because of what I do for a living. I, um, I have, even after 35 years, I still have a passion for it because I believe that everybody has a voice. And I work with kids that, have, that live with pretty severe disabilities, and many of them communicate non-verbally. And it's my job to give them a voice, and it's my job to make sure that people listen to them. So I, I have a passion for that, and I think too much, whether it's the federal government, the state government, or even local government, people aren't being listened to, and that's how I felt. And I, I felt like if I feel that way, I think other people feel that way, and I think that I would do a good job making sure that everybody had a voice in their local government. Mm -hmm. You talk about people being listened to. What are some of the challenges and areas of concern that you see for residents of Queen Anne's County right now? So I have been um, knocking on a lot of doors. I've, um, I don't have my Fitbit on today, but I use my Fitbit all the time. And according to my Fitbit, I've walked almost 300 miles canvassing since I first decided to run for office. And I've knocked on close to 500 doors. And um, the concerns run from anywhere from, um, I had a woman tell me that she was concerned because she had foxes in her cul-de-sac. So things like that, but really the, the really concerns for people are traffic, obviously, which is a concern for all of us, overdevelopment and education. Mm -hmm. But everybody has their, I was surprised to hear some other things like the foxes. I had somebody, an older gentleman, gentleman tell me that he was concerned because he had buzzards landing on his roof all the time. So you hear a lot of stories when you're out there talking to people. And um, I've really enjoyed that part of campaigning. Absolutely. So we'll take a minute to go through, give you time to respond to these next questions. Okay. And we're talking about the comprehensive plan, which is going to be updated during this next term. Mm -hmm. What is your vision, maybe some of your thoughts on that plan? So obviously one of the most important things that the um, next set of commissioners is going to do is help develop that comprehensive plan. And um, we have a good working document to start with. I've read the current plan, and obviously it's very thorough, it's very well written and why reinvent the wheel? It has a good body to it. I just think, obviously, after 10 years, we need to do some updating. I would love to see, it does have some green initiatives in there, but I would love to see more of that. I think that we really need to have a strong environmental part of that comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. I would be representing um, most of the Ken Island area, and we have already had flood situations, and District 4 and District 3 are the most likely to be hit with catastrophic flooding in the future. So I would want to make sure that we address some environmental issues. And I um, want to continue with workforce housing, and I would love to see some um, aging in place housing put into that plan. Mm -hmm. Going from that thought, aging in place, what are some provisions you might make for senior citizens in the county? So again, through canvassing and through um, speaking with people that work for the Department of Aging, just through my canvassing, speaking to some senior citizens, um, they um, would like to just generally see some more services. I think the county does a great job. I think the employees at the Department of Aging really take everything into account, and I'm so impressed with everything they have to offer. But I'm sure there's always some changes that could be made. 
but really the biggest thing for me would be um, affordable housing for seniors. We have over 12,000 seniors living in our county and some of them survive on social security checks so I'd like to see affordable housing for them and again I'd like to see aging in place because right now there there is no community like that in Queen Anne's County and if you are looking for something like that you need to leave the county so that's really what I would love to to see happen. Okay. So the county commissioners had been previously approached about funding above maintenance of effort for mm -hmm. the school system. How would you expect to handle that type of request? So obviously, like I said in my introduction, I've been in public education for 35 years, so I am a strong advocate for that. Um, I happen to be a union representative for my building, so obviously a strong supporter of the teachers' um, union. Maintenance of effort to me is um, a floor, it's not a ceiling, and I think that the current commissioners see it as a ceiling and there's nowhere for them to go. Um, I think that you, they need to be involved. I mean, I know that we have very little say in, we have no line item vetoes or anything like that, but I think if you're involved in the process from early on and you talk to your teachers and you talk to your administrators and you talk to your superintendent and you get a vision of where they want to see their schools in five years or 10 years and you work with them towards that and you work with them as to which direction they want to go in. We can't, we have a great school system, but we can't continue to maintain that school system only with maintenance of effort. Mm -hmm. You spoke about flooding on Kent Island. Mm -hmm. How would you balance future development and protecting the environment? So like I said, a lot of that would be covered in the comprehensive plan. I think that we need to really address, I mean climate change is real and we really need to deal with that. And so I would look at um, some zoning regulations, um, looking carefully at critical areas you know, um, getting an updated map of where critical areas are because I know that we're losing um, wetlands all the time, so we probably need to rethink some of that, um, building codes and um, making sure there were some green initiatives, like I said, making sure that developments that are in the planning stages had some real um, stringent stormwater runoff plans available to help us meet our goals as far as reducing the nitrates that go into the bay. Mm -hmm. We need to foster business growth and economic development in the county. What is some of your thoughts about doing that? So I know recently, well first of all, I know that the economic um, development department right now is without a director. They have a manager but they don't have a director. So I would need to take, we would need to really look at that department and see how it's functioning and see if we do need to fill that position. And again, just like I said with the schools, I'd love to sit down with them and what's their vision for the county? What do they see as industry that, that would be a good fit for Queen Anne's County? I know that there was a study recently commissioned of the North County and there were some ideas, some ideas proposed there for the Millington area and for the Centerville area, so I would love to explore those. Obviously, first of all, I would talk to the people that live up there and um, see what their ideas are. But, and also I'm a b big believer in green energy, so I'd love to either see industry, green industries coming here, or even some job training for, for green industry. Mm -hmm. That brings us to our next question. Residents in the northern part of the county, oftentimes they feel they don't get the same services that the rest of the county does. How would you address that concern with them? So um, I go, I keep saying I go back, but I go back to my canvassing. Um, I have canvassed up in that part of the county. I've, I've spent some time up in Sudlersville and um, really how, I can't make decisions for them until I talk to them. Like I just said about the economic development, you need to go up there, you need to have town hall style meetings, you need to knock on doors up there, you need to get a sense of what the residents that live up there want and I wouldn't want to make any decisions for them until I had a lot of input from them so that they, they could tell me what they envision for their towns. Mm -hmm. Are there any, any of the issues that we've talked about or maybe something we haven't talked about that you are concerned you'd like to discuss? Um, so like I said to you, traffic, when I came here I was a little stressed because I just made it in the nick of time. And um, I know that recently there was a traffic plan proposed, um, but we would need to wait for um, state approval for that. And again, by being out and talking to people, by corresponding with people on social media, by driving 
in the county all the time, obviously on my own, I see a lot of these back roads obviously used by people that don't live in the county. I, um, if I'm taking Route 50 and I'm getting off to go home, I live on Ken Island, and I'm making a left at that light that's taking you over the overpass to the bridge that's getting off on Roman Coke, you can only go left or right. And I can't tell you on a Sunday night how many people go straight through that light. Um, I know that there is an intersection, I think it's like 319 and 213, or 309 and 213. There's a stop sign there, and people have posted video after video of nobody stopping and just making that right. So I think that if we had officers positioned on those back roads, not that it would deter everybody, but if they knew that we were ticketing people for traffic violations, that might help. All right. Well, thank you so much for participating. Thank you. And thank you. Us here today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.